Tesla's most advanced robot isn't being trained in factories, it's being tested in kitchens. And that single decision may explain why Optimus Gen 3 is about to leave every humanoid robot behind. Cooking looks simple until you break it down. It's not just heat and ingredients. It's chaos. Flames that change instantly. Liquids that spill without warning. Fragile food that breaks if touched the wrong way. Timing that has zero tolerance for hesitation. One second too late, and the meal is ruined. One wrong move, and safety becomes an issue. This is why cooking exposes every weakness a robot can have. Factories are controlled. Warehouses are predictable. Even advanced robotic arms thrive there because nothing unexpected happens. The environment never fights back. Kitchens do. Every home is different. Every stove behaves slightly differently. Utensils aren't standardized. Ingredients vary in size, texture, and condition. And humans expect perfection anyway. That's what makes cooking so brutal for machines. It requires vision, judgment, balance, force control, and decision-making all at once. A robot has to know how tightly to grip an egg without crushing it, how fast oil heats in a pan, when food is about to burn, and when something has gone wrong before it becomes dangerous. There's no pause button, no reset. This is why, for decades, robotics companies avoided kitchens altogether. They chased factories, logistics, and stage demos instead. Cooking was quietly treated as impossible. But Tesla didn't avoid it. And that choice reveals something most people missed about Optimus Gen 3. Because Tesla didn't see cooking as a feature, they saw it as a filter. At first, Optimus was framed as a factory helper. A machine built to handle dangerous, repetitive labor that humans shouldn't have to do. That story made sense. It was safe. Familiar. And honestly, it kept expectations low. But behind the scenes, Tesla was already drifting away from that narrative. If you look closely at what Tesla has actually shown over the last few years, a strange pattern emerges. Not warehouses. Not construction sites. Not heavy industry. Instead, nearly every meaningful demo revolves around everyday human spaces. Carrying objects around a room. Sorting items. Folding clothes. Cleaning surfaces. And most notably, working in kitchens. Tasks that don't impress on stage but are brutally hard in reality. This wasn't accidental. Tesla didn't suddenly wake up and decide household chores were interesting. The shift happened because factories are forgiving. Homes are not. In a factory, everything is positioned where it's supposed to be. In a home, nothing is. Objects move. Humans interfere. Environments change daily. And that's exactly where true intelligence is exposed. So Tesla stopped optimizing Optimus for applause and started optimizing it for survival in human spaces. A robot that can function in a messy kitchen can function almost anywhere. But the opposite isn't true. A robot that thrives on a clean stage often collapses the moment reality pushes back. What makes this even more interesting is what Tesla didn't advertise. While other companies chased lifelike faces, dramatic movements, and viral demos, Tesla quietly poured effort into tasks no one was asking for. Opening fridges, handling utensils, managing heat, avoiding spills, recovering from mistakes. These aren't features that sell hype. They're features that decide whether a robot belongs in a home or stays trapped in a lab. And this is where Optimus Gen 3 becomes fundamentally different from everything before it. This version isn't designed to impress investors or dominate headlines. It's designed to coexist with humans without breaking, freezing, or becoming dangerous. That's also why Gen 3 isn't being treated as another prototype. For Tesla, this is the first version meant to leave controlled environments behind. The first one expected to function without excuses. No teleoperation safety net. No stage choreography. Just autonomy in the real world. But here's where most people get confused. Because what they think they've already seen was never Gen 3 to begin with. A lot of people believe they've already seen Optimus Gen 3. The images. The clips, the yellow and black robots moving around with upgraded arms. Online, those visuals were treated like proof that Tesla's next generation humanoid had already arrived. But that assumption is completely wrong. Elon Musk has been unusually clear about this. None of the recently shown units are Gen 3. Not even close. What people are seeing are refined versions of Gen 2 and Gen 2.5, machines that are still heavily supported by remote operation controlled environments, and constant supervision. 
They look smoother. They move better. But they're not autonomous in the way Gen 3 is meant to be. And this distinction matters more than it seems. Because Gen 3 isn't just another visual upgrade. It represents a shift in responsibility. Earlier versions were allowed to fail. Falls were tolerated. Hesitation was expected. Human operators were always there, ready to step in when something went wrong. Gen 3 doesn't get that luxury. According to Tesla's current plan, Optimus Gen 3 is the first version intended to operate fully on its own. No hidden controllers. No safety puppeteering. Just the robot, its sensors, its hands, and its decision-making in the real world. That's why Tesla has been unusually quiet about showing it. Once a robot is autonomous, every mistake becomes visible and every failure becomes news. This is also why the timeline matters. Gen 3 isn't positioned as an experiment. It's positioned as a finished product. Polished, refined, and expected to function daily, not occasionally. That alone puts it in a completely different category from the machines people are comparing it to. And here's the uncomfortable part. If Gen 3 can truly handle open-ended tasks without human guidance, then cooking isn't a demo anymore. It's a test of trust. A robot near fire, heat, sharp tools, and fragile food has no room for error. Which raises the next question. If Optimus is expected to operate independently, how did Tesla suddenly multiply its abilities at this scale? When Elon Musk said Optimus Gen 3 would have around 3,000 capabilities, many people dismissed it as hype. The numbers sounded inflated, almost meaningless. But the reality behind it is far more unsettling than a big headline figure. Those 3,000 capabilities aren't giant tasks. They're micro-skills. Small, precise actions that seem trivial on their own but become powerful when combined. Gripping a knife at the correct angle. Applying just enough pressure to crack an egg without crushing it. Adjusting heat in response to visual cues. Recognizing when food is spoiled. Recovering when something slips or spills. Each of these actions is a separate skill. This is where most robots fail. They're programmed to execute a fixed sequence. If something changes, they freeze. Optimus works differently. Its skills are composable. That means it doesn't just follow steps. It builds decisions in real time by chaining small abilities together. And that's the difference between automation and intelligence. Traditional kitchen appliances can heat, stir, or time but they don't understand context. Optimus does. It can adapt recipes, substitute ingredients, adjust portions, and respond to unexpected changes. Not because it memorized dishes, but understands food as a system. Ingredients. Timing. Preferences. Safety. What makes this even more powerful is how those skills are learned. Optimus isn't trained like old-school robots. It learns by watching. Videos. Human demonstrations. Real-world behavior. Then it runs billions of simulations in virtual environments, refining every movement before attempting it physically. Mistakes happen digitally, not in your kitchen. And once a skill is learned by one robot, it doesn't stay isolated. It spreads. Instantly. The entire network benefits. This is collective learning at a scale humans simply can't match. That's why Gen 3 isn't just better than Gen 2.5. It's exponentially more capable. When the number of skills doubles, the usefulness doesn't double. It explodes. But even the smartest brain fails if the body can't keep up. And that's where Tesla made a design choice most people completely misunderstood. When people criticize Optimus, they almost always point to how it looks. Too plain. Too stiff. Not human enough. Compared to other humanoid robots with sleek curves, soft skin, and dramatic movements, Tesla's design can feel underwhelming at first glance. But that reaction misses the point entirely. In humanoid robotics, appearance is a distraction. Performance comes from physics. Weight distribution. Balance. Energy efficiency. Stability. A robot that's too heavy wastes power just trying to stand. A robot that's too light becomes unstable and unpredictable. Every extra gram affects how long it can operate and how safely it can move. This is why Gen 2.5 quietly mattered more than most people realized. Tesla didn't chase flashier demos. They refined fundamentals. Enclosed joints. Fewer exposed cables. Softer transitions between components. A structure that behaves less like an experiment and more like a commercial product meant to survive daily use. These aren't cosmetic choices. They're survival choices. And design influences far more than movement. 
Roughly two-thirds of a humanoid robot's real-world performance comes from its physical architecture. If the body fights the software, no amount of intelligence can save it. Tesla understood this early and prioritized reliability over spectacle. That's also why Optimus doesn't move like a performer. It moves like a worker. No exaggerated gestures. No unnecessary motion. Every movement is economical, controlled, and deliberate. In a kitchen, that restraint isn't boring. It's essential. Most companies optimize for what looks impressive on stage. Tesla optimized for what doesn't fail under stress. Heat. Repetition. Mistakes. Time. That's why Optimus can be trusted near sharp tools and open flames while other robots are still confined to demonstrations. And this design philosophy becomes even more revealing when Optimus is placed next to its most hyped rival. Because the real competition isn't about who looks more human. It's about who survives the real world. Right now, the humanoid robot space is exploding. Every few weeks, a new machine is announced, packed with advanced hardware and dramatic promises. Among all of them, one name keeps surfacing as the so-called true rival to Optimus, Xpeng Iron. And on stage, Iron looks almost unreal. Its movements are smooth. Its proportions mirror a real human. Soft outer materials hide the mechanics beneath. A bionic spine. Dozens of joints. Hands with an impressive range of motion. In controlled demos, Iron moves so naturally that many people genuinely believe there was a human inside a suit. That illusion worked exactly as intended. But here's the problem. Cooking doesn't happen on a stage. Real kitchens are chaotic. Oil splashes. Steam clouds vision. Objects slip. Heat changes without warning. Surfaces aren't clean. Tools aren't positioned neatly. And mistakes don't pause the environment. A robot either adapts instantly, or it fails. This is where Tesla's approach quietly pulls ahead. Instead of chasing maximum freedom across the entire body, Tesla spent its complexity budget where it actually matters. The hands. Optimus doesn't need theatrical hip motion or lifelike posture to cook. It needs to grasp tools reliably, adjust pressure precisely, and recover when something goes wrong. While competitors optimize for appearance and emotional response, Tesla optimized for interaction with real objects. Turning knobs. Folding cloth. Lifting fragile items. Handling heat safely. These are boring problems until they aren't solved. Then everything else becomes irrelevant. There's also a strategic divide happening. Xpeng Iron is aimed at retail, hospitality, and service environments, where presentation and human-like behavior matter more than endurance. Tesla isn't interested in that path. Optimus was built to survive factories first, then homes. That means durability over delicacy. Reliability over illusion. In other words, one robot is designed to look human. The other is designed to live in a human world. And that difference becomes unavoidable when we talk about the one problem almost every robotics company still avoids. The hands. In robotics, everything eventually collapses into one problem. Manipulation. Not walking. Not balance. Not even vision. If a robot cannot reliably use its hands, it doesn't matter how intelligent or human-like it appears. It will always remain a demo machine. This is where most humanoid robots quietly fail. Many companies showcase beautiful robotic hands with dozens of joints and impressive finger articulation. On paper, they look superior. In practice, they're fragile, slow, and computationally expensive. Every extra joint adds latency. Every extra sensor increases failure points. The result is a hand that looks human but behaves inconsistently under pressure. Tesla went in the opposite direction. Instead of copying the human hand exactly, Optimus uses a simplified but highly controlled design. Fewer degrees of freedom, stronger actuators, and tighter feedback loops. This allows the robot to apply consistent force, react faster to slips, and recover from mistakes in real time. That decision changes everything. Cooking, cleaning, folding clothes, or handling tools isn't about perfect finger motion. It's about repeatability. Can the robot grab the same object thousands of times without error? Can it adjust grip pressure instantly when an object starts to fall? Can it handle fragile items one moment and heavy tools the next? Tesla's training advantage becomes obvious here. Optimus learns hand control the same way Tesla trains autonomous driving, massive datasets, simulation at scale, and continuous real-world feedback. Every grasp, every failure, 
Every correction feeds the system. Over time, the hands don't just move better. They understand objects. Competitors often rely on pre-programmed grasp libraries or limited reinforcement learning. That works in labs. It breaks in homes. And there's another uncomfortable truth. Human-like hands are expensive. They're difficult to manufacture, difficult to repair, and nearly impossible to mass-produce at consumer-friendly prices. Tesla designed Optimus with manufacturing in mind from day one. The hands are not a technological flex. They are a production decision. This is why Tesla isn't rushing to show flashy demos. When Optimus is handed a task, it's expected to perform it again tomorrow, next week, and next year, not just once on camera. Because in the real world, the robot that works quietly every day always beats the one that only looks impressive once. And that leads directly to the final question everyone is asking. When does this stop being a prototype and start becoming something you can actually buy? Tesla Bot Gen 3 isn't just another humanoid robot. It represents a shift in how humans interact with machines, moving from spectacle to utility, from labs to homes. Optimus is designed to handle real-world chaos, master household tasks, and learn continuously, turning what once seemed impossible into a daily reality. Imagine walking into your kitchen after a long, exhausting day, and a robot not only prepares your dinner but adapts it to your dietary needs, cleans up after itself, and even folds the laundry. This isn't science fiction, it's the tangible promise of Optimus. And unlike competitors who prioritize appearance and stage performance, Tesla prioritized consistency, dexterity, and scalability. Elon Musk's vision of a world where work becomes optional and robots handle repetitive chores feels less like fantasy and more like an inevitable next step. With production plans aiming for millions of units and prices potentially dropping to $20,000 to $25,000, the era of household humanoid assistance could arrive sooner than anyone expected. The question now isn't whether robots can exist. It's whether humanity is ready to embrace a life where machines do the tasks we once thought were ours alone. Optimus Gen 3 isn't just building a robot. It's quietly building a future where human potential is freed from the mundane, and a new kind of daily life becomes possible. The era of robots in our homes is no longer just coming. It's almost here.